meeting to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda is the roll call. Mrs. Treadway, if you would do the roll call, please. Ms. Jignansky? She is excused. Kate Mayer? Here. 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 Myself here. Gary Dunlop? Here. Joe Gittins? Here. And Cheryl Hancock? Here. Well, with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, um, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to <coughs> approve the agenda as published. I so move. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. So then we will move on to recognition and thank you. Recognition of board service. Dr. Carlson. Thank you. This evening, we recognize the service and contributions made by Kari Treadway during her term on the school board. Mrs. Treadway, you have made a positive impact on the students and employees of the district during your tenure on the board. Your perspective as a parent, the many personal and professional gifts and talents you have brought to the leadership of the board, and most importantly, your passion for kids has served the district very well. Thank you for the sacrifices you have made in order to serve. We wish you the very best and hope that you will continue to share those special gifts and talents with us through opportunities to serve that you are passionate about and believe will benefit the students, parents, employees, and the school district. And at this time, we want to present to you, if you would join Mrs. Hancock out in the front here, we'd like to present you <clears throat> with two items. The first is a certificate of commendation from the Wisconsin Association of School Boards. In recognition of your service to the children in Wisconsin Public Schools, and also, along with that, the Eagle Award, again recognizing you for your service to the students of the School District of Holman. And best wishes to you, Kari. Thank you very much. Okay, then thank you very much. Uh, reports and discussion. DECA presentation, Heather Bresky. And I was told earlier that we have our officers that are going to take get us started. So welcome. Do they need them? Oh, yep, they're grabbing it. All right, hello everyone. Um, we are this year's Home and Deca officer team, and we are so excited to, excited to be here tonight to tell you all about our activities we have participated in this past year as Home and Deca. Um, before we get started, I would like to introduce our officer team. I am Jacqueline Johnson, this year's Home and Decker president. This is Gabby Fastnet, Emily Mahovic, Brianna Dahl, Jordan Mason, and Brianna Hawes. Um, all right, so a little fun facts about Home and Decker. We were established at HHS in 1974, and since then have expanded greatly. Decca is a marketing and business extracurricular class while well, any student can be involved in it if they take a marketing and business class which are marketing and business concepts advanced marketing sports and entertainment marketing or entrepreneurship 
While home and DECA, with DECA, students have the opportunity to compete in both the competition side and also the social side of DECA. So here next is Brianna Dahl, our Vice President of Social Intelligence, to tell you more about our social aspect of home and DECA. Hi, my name is Brianna Dahl. I am the Vice President of Social Intelligence. Um, I basically plan all of our socials. It's where all of our chapter members get together. Um, we have a social every month. Uh, a few socials we have had this year are Chuck E. T Chuck e. Cheese, uh, cookie decorating, pumpkin party, or uh, pumpkin carving, and we also had a pizza party. Um, we also go on a trip each term. Um, this year we went to Valley Fair for first term. Second term we went to the Mall of America. Third term we went to the Bucks game. And then just yesterday we went to the Brewers game, which was a lot of fun. As Jacqueline said, my name is Gabby Fastenet and I'm the Vice President of Media Relations. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the year, we do have a Facebook and a Twitter page. Our Twitter has been extremely active throughout the year. And we have some of DECA's most important pages following our progress, such as DECA Incorporated and some of the nation's regional DECA pages. It has been a great way for us to network with other chapters in the state, as well as the country. And also our Twitter page has been extremely instrumental in connecting with our own DECA members and getting out information. As you know, we've been sending out email blasts throughout the year to the board members, as well as all administration. Mm -hmm. The blasts were sent out in conjunction with the newsletter updates each month. And although we didn't get much of a response from the blast, I'm hoping that they were informative and helpful. We have been contacted by the local newspapers regarding our competition, our community service events, and our holiday store. The local reporters have been extremely important to our chapter and in getting our chapter in the newspapers. And lastly, as a chapter, we've also been contacted by the TV stations for our holiday store. It is nice to see the response from our community as well as the media in all aspects of our chapter. And as the um, Vice President of Media Relations, I do believe that we um, reached all our goals in our media. All right, like Jacqueline said before, I am Emily Mahalovic, and I am the Vice President of Community Service. Um, as an officer team and as a chapter, one of our main goals was to get more involved throughout our community, and we feel as we have definitely accomplished this. Um, a few of our activities that we have done this year was we hosted a red-out event through the American Heart Association. We did this in February, and it was just a red-out at a basketball game, and we raised over $800 to send to the American Heart Association, so that was responded very well to. Um, we also held our annual holiday meal in January, which we've been doing for over 25 years now, so that's definitely been another successful event. Um, new this year, we also served a meal at the Ronald McDonald House of Rochester, Minnesota, and that was um, really fun for us and a really exciting new experience, and so I think the officer team next year will also plan on doing that again as well. Um, another activity we did was the Stepping Up for Down Syndrome Walk, and we also um, participated in a coat drive and through our entrepreneurship store we sponsored we were able to sponsor a family in need this holiday season so that was really nice to give back and um, through some of our written projects we also participated in the Mike Hickey benefit which I'm sure you guys are all well aware of and um, it was great experience to get out in our community and to help someone very near and dear to our hearts <laughs> and lastly um, an organ donation campaign was held at our school so we are also very active in that so we again just to recap we are very very proud and excited and look, look looking to the future excited to continue this trend so as Jacqueline said my name is Jordan Mason and I am this year's vice president of finance I mean, in order to offset some of the costs of the activities that we do we did numerous fundraisers throughout the year some of the fundraisers include the, the school store our model store the homecoming t-shirt sales our athletic programs the Packer raffle Packer raffle sales, the flower basket sales, our DECA dances, and then finally our waffle breakfast. In addition, we have business partnerships with local businesses throughout the community, and these include Ultra Federal Credit Union. These fundraisers provided the opportunity for our members to participate in our social events, as well as our district and international conference. And lastly, like Jacqueline said, I am Brianna Haas. I am the Vice President of Leadership Development, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about our competitions this year. Um, earlier in January, we took around 100 students to compete at um, the Stout Campus in Menominee for a District 1 competition. And from there, we had 43 students qualify for the state competition in Lake Geneva. And from there, we had 14 students who double qualified for the internationals. And we also had um, 44 contestant medals, 16 first place trophies, seven second place trophies, 
four third place trophies, five fourth place trophies, and two fifth place fifth place trophies at the state conference. We are very proud and from there we are bringing 40 competitors to International Career Development Conference later this month in Anaheim, California. So we are very, very excited about that. And uh, we would now like to thank you for your continuous support you have given us throughout the years. We had hoped to represent Homan very well at ICDC in a few weeks. We would now like to open up the floor to any questions or comments you guys have. Any questions? Um, I do, I have a question. Who, who is your faculty sponsor? Um, Heather Bresky and Scott Shriver All back right. there. Just kudos. And Miss Osgood as well, so. <laughs> kudos to them, I always like for their names to be mentioned because I know how important it is. Um, I think I've mentioned before, I have a daughter who started in DECA, um, but just your combination of social giving as well as your business involvement is so critical to the future of our world and I praise you so much for that. Um, one of the things that helped my daughter become the coordinator for all the volunteers at Wells Fargo in Minneapolis, she finds events for all of the, she calls them the suits, um, to go out in the community and they have to serve and volunteer one day a week. And part of what she did in DECA helped her with that. I just think that's a very good combination. And then finally I want to recommend a book to all of you. It's a brand new book. It's called Lean In. It's written by Cheryl Sandberg and it speaks about the future and the empowerment of women in business and in leadership. Um, check it out. Lean In. It's a short read but a good read. <laughs> And today we also do have a few of our international qualifiers with us. They're all wearing the DECA shirts in this region. Um, only a few of us could come with other obligations, but um, the full list is on your screen. But here, are I a think few we of should get them all up front so that they can be televised at home. So, come on! <laughs> We're not going to let these ladies sit down until you come up. So that might be. Just kind of right in front. Join them. <laughs> we do have some boys in the group too, I promise. Not here. <laughs> I believe it. Um, as Kate said, it's, it's funny because I work in um, Winona at Southeast Technical College and I work in the advancement office and people I supervise do our social media, public relations, community relations, fundraising for the organization. So I hope you realize that what you're learning here, whether it's Wells Fargo or in higher ed or whether you begin your own business, it's real life skills that you're taking away. And we're so blessed to have you committed to putting your best foot forward and representing us. And we're very proud of you and we want you to know that. So kudos to you and congratulations. <laughs> So you may be seated. Right, thank you for coming you. up. I hope you waved at your family. I, <laughs> I think Mr. Menninger always says how enlightening and enthusiastic it is or fun it is to have students come forward because you are why we're here, so. When I, when I saw the group walked in, I, I leaned over to Ms. Hancock and said, it's gonna be a great evening, so thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you. and thank you for your leadership. So then moving on to instructional services, professional school update, UWL, and Wendy Savasky. Ms. Savasky, are you gonna do any, they're gonna handle their introductions okay. themselves? All right. Well, um, thanks, Dale. Uh, well, we first of all just wanted to, uh, again, thank the Holman School District and the board for allowing us to pursue the professional development school relationship that we have out at Viking Elementary. And uh, I'm Marcy Wyckoff, 
Horn, director for the School of Education at UWL, Ann Epstein, um, professor in early childhood, and then uh, Dr. Gary Wilhite, who is um, PDS uh, liaison coordinator for UWL. So I, again, wanted to introduce them, but to tell everyone that we have really had an, an amazing uh, first run at this, and Ann's gonna share more about that, but we wanted to be sure to thank uh, Bonnie and Neil for their leadership, Wendy and Dale uh, for the support, and um, I guess I'll just turn it over to Ann and let her get to the to the details. Alrighty, okay. All right, thank you, Marcy, and uh, again, thank you to the board and to the uh, homing community. It's been a great honor for me to be the early childhood sort of go-to person. So my role is to coordinate the experiences that our students have, and they have had some great experiences. So we went low tech tonight. We do not have a PowerPoint. We just have an old fashioned handout. Uh, and I hope it's uh, um, informative for you. Um, we have had uh, nice participation across the uh, preschool, kindergarten, first, second, third, and fourth grade classrooms at Viking. Um, we have had uh, a lot of interest. Um, we placed 14 students in the fall, 12 in the spring. We anticipate 14 again in the fall. And we've had an average of around 19 or 20 students that have been interested. So we have some dis disappointed folks, and it's been hard for us to, to uh, say no to everybody, but uh, to the students that we cannot place. But we're real pleased with the placements that we've had, that's for sure. So uh, I, I listed. Uh, some feedback that we've received from our mentor teachers. The idea of a PDS, and I'll ask Gary to uh, chime in here if I'm not representing it correctly, but the idea of a professional development school is that it benefits the students as well as the mentor teachers. So uh, in order to assess whether or not this has been a successful experience, we need to tap into both of those groups. And our mentor teachers have uh, stated uh, very clearly that they appreciate the opportunity to have a student in their classroom for an extended period of time. And this has uh, led to them becoming more reflective about their own practice. Uh, they've learned some new tricks from our uh, from our students, um, and they, they particularly appreciate having that opportunity to guide our students and to see the light bulb go on. That's been one of the common phrases that they've used. Um, and just a, a, a sort of a quick reminder, our students are placed for a, a minimum of 100 hours over the course of the semester. Um, and often it's more than that. This year it's been a Monday, Wednesday morning experience. We're moving in the fall to consecutive days and that was also based on feedback from the mentor teachers. They prefer to have students experience uh, several days in a row rather than spreading it out over the week. So we're real pleased that we've been able to rearrange class schedules and so forth so that our students can be placed um, consecutive days beginning in the fall. Um, we, uh, the only challenge that's come up so far, we have had a couple of students that have required a little extra mentoring. Um, and uh, even though that's required a little bit of extra time from several of our teachers, they see that as a benefit, um, having to uh, dig a little bit deeper to find ways to support those students. Um, and they, those particular students have been successful in the end. Um, feedback from our students, they, they really love their mentor teachers. It's been really hard for them to say goodbye at the end of their experience. Uh, they've learned instructional strategies. They've learned uh, ways to support students from a classroom management perspective. Um, they're very, very impressed with the creativity. I think the thing that they mention most often is that they feel a part of the classroom. So they feel as if they have become another teacher in the particular classroom, which is just fabulous. It's a great way for them to learn. Um, we began a study, Dr. Wilhite and I have uh, a study that we began in uh, the fall, and we are in the process of uh, analyzing our results. The focus of the study is teacher efficacy. We had a pre-survey that we asked uh, teachers to complete 
um, about their sense of themselves as teachers and then we ask them to complete that same um, survey at the end of the semester. So there wasn't a lot of time between the pre and the post but there was uh, a little bit of time there for us to see how things changed and they rated themselves quite highly in all areas. Um, the one area that they found to be the most challenging is working with families who may have a child that requires some extra support, which is not surprising. That usually is an area that is challenging for teachers. Okay, um, I listed a few other uh, details. We had um, eight teachers who completed the pre-survey and four who completed the post-survey, six who participated in our focus group discussion. So our goal is to have that <coughs> study written up and published uh, certainly by the time the summer rolls around. Okay, and Gary's going to share a little bit of information about our other PBS sites and how things are going in those locations. I am Gary Wilhite, and I, my uh, position is the oversight of all the PBSs that UWL has. So I wanted to update you a little bit on what we are doing outside of Holman and within Holman. Uh, first of all, we do have a professional development school conference that we attend every year. We rotate through the sites with teachers that attend. Uh, this year, Kathy Burge from Viking was able to attend with us. She also presented at two different sessions with us, and I have those listed for you to see. Uh, the first one, is the teacher's nurture, was based on the experience at Viking. Uh, the other one was based upon our experience across the board with the PDS sites. We currently have nine active sites. We have five elementary, they are in Holman, uh, La Crosse and on Alaska. We have two middle schools. We have La Crosse and on Alaska, and we have two high schools, both in La Crosse. And our future expansion, part of our goal and part of our initiative with PDS is that all of our students will have a quality experience in their field, and that we'll be, we will be pairing with mentor teachers that are of high quality in order to provide an excellent candidate when they exit our program. So with that, we, we do have that commitment and we will be seeking ways to expand the program and we may be coming back to you very shortly. Thank you. Any questions for the group? Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Did you wanna make a comment? No, okay. Okay, then next is instructional services, four-year-old kindergarten lease agreements. But you have, I'm just going to um, present uh, the next couple items actually, and you have the lease agreements. This is an annual process, and I want to acknowledge Mr. Jansen, and also I know Ms. Savasky has had an opp opportunity to join Neil um, working with our two daycare sites. And so what you have in front of you is an issue paper documenting um, the, the intended agreements. And this would be coming to the board at the next board meeting for consideration for your approval. And uh, we did, on the issue paper, did note the, this year's rates and uh, then the, the agreed upon rates for next year as well. Uh, both uh, Mr. Jansen and Ms. Savasky, well, Ms. Savasky stepped out, I think. Um, but I know Neil's here. If you do have any questions um, at this time, you have to answer those or certainly prior to the April 22nd board meeting if you have any. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to CESA 4 contracted services. This is also an annual event where we come um, before you and look for your approval of the contracted services through CESA. And so you have that. Uh, you have an issue paper outlining uh, what we did is we put down the costs from this current year, and those have that strike through, and then the intended or the planned costs um, to the right of that. We would be coming again t for your approval at the next board meeting, April 22nd, and uh, be happy to respond to any questions. Not, uh, not many significant changes. There are some price uh, differences, but uh, my, uh, uh, considering the services that we receive from CESA, again, I would not um, describe this as anything significant, significantly different. <clears throat> and questions about CESA 4 contracts? 
No question. I just want to make a comment. I really appreciate the side by side of last year's, this year's. I know that that often is a question that is asked, and nice job in, in heading that off and anticipating this and the previous one as well. So it certainly helps me do my homework better as well. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. And again, the keep, there's several key people that work on these, and I look to uh, the directors um, to help with that. So thank you. Then moving on to experience contracts, field experience contracts. These are uh, somewhat routine, too. Uh, they're somewhat <coughs> intermittent. Um, uh, every now and then we bring these to you. Um, we typically get these from especially institutions that we partner with, uh, primarily often from outside the state as, as well. And so tonight you have um, an agreement from Luther College in Decorah. Uh, just today we received another one that we'll bring to you at the next board meeting and again um, there isn't uh, you know the obligation from the district you can read we included the agreement uh, throughout but again these are uh, standard what we have in, um, agreed to or engaged and partnered with the um, particular Luther in this case in the past so uh, again we'd be coming at to you at the next board meeting. This is one of those um, items that, <clears throat> in fact, the other two items too, that uh, we even have some discussion administratively. Be happy to take some guidance from the board that in the future, would you um, still appreciate the two board meeting process or is this something that you would entertain just going to consent? So that's something that you can uh, perhaps give some direction later on, but for this go around, we are looking at the next board meeting for approval. Questions? Is there any thoughts initially? Well, initially, if we could speed it up without board member. I mean, I don't see any cost to the district. I don't see anything that needs discussing. So I would trust your leadership on that. If yeah, I think if it's substantially the same routine as what the ones we have seen, if there would be something unique and different, you might want to do that. Otherwise, certainly. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. Cool. Otherwise, so uh, that's it to, for that. Okay, so. then moving on to human resources. Um, employee handbook updates and changes, Melissa <laughs> Cates. Oh. Hello. <laughs> okay, so tonight I have some um, items for you to look at for the handbook. Um, First off, though, I'd like to just give you an update of where we're at. Um, we continue to work with the employee relations team to, so these items have gone through the employee relations team before we bring them to you. And we're continuing to work with them specifically now with the driver's contract since that does expire on June 30th. So we actually have a full day coming up at the end of the month that we're working with them to review a bunch of language. Hopefully we can get most of those items in um, before the expiration of that collective bargaining agreement. So that's where we're at with that part of the handbook as well. So could you just explain, and maybe you would defer this, but with the Supreme Court rulings and the current status on Act 10, does that impact our employee handbook status at all, or is that I mean, at this time, we, we continue <laughs> to operate uh, within a handbook. That is uh, what our council has given us at this time. And so obviously we are all interested as far as what may be coming. But at this point, the advice and counsel to us is to continue to apply our handbook and, um, and um, go from there. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So the first document on the agenda is the related to payroll dates. This is under part one, which is all employees provisions applicable to all staff. This is a recovery of a sentence that was inadvertently deleted on our first round of finalizing some documents. So um, in order to be official with everything, we're just bringing that back to make sure we have the formal approval to add that sentence back in. Um, the next oops, item is dues deductions. Um, this also falls under um, the 
actually this is going to be in part one this is a brand new section that we are adding um, there are lots of questions about dues deductions how do I start them how do I stop them and just to make it all formal and have a place for everyone to be able to find that and make sure they all get the same information we'll be adding a new section under subsection six which is the pay periods reflecting dues deductions. And in fact, Melissa, we've continued to get throughout the year questions on, are we going to continue this? What do we even offer this? And so we felt it was important for our employees to put something in that they can refer to. The next topic is holidays. Um, this is under part one as well. So um, we've, you may recall holidays we've brought to you a couple times this year for revisions and just wasn't working the way we had thought it would so we have completely revised it again and made some changes to reflect it as a spring holiday which still gives us a little more opportunity to define when that holiday will fall on it's not necessarily those Easter holidays um, but it will be a defined holiday set annually by the district administrator we found in a couple cases this was confusing for our employees uh, so much so that some uh, through the system were unintentionally but still taking a floating holiday at other times during the year when it wasn't that's not what the intent was and so uh, we are somewhat back to this but we feel that this would will help us at least uh, in the time being before perhaps more changes through calendar is made and so on so could you just clarify since we're on that during over the most recent spring break, Easter break, whatever we call that holiday break, is the uh, is the district office open, or it is no. closed on those dates? So this is in addition to that. No, nope. these will take the place of those two. So um, the district office, let's say it's not on those Easter holidays next year, then the district office would be closed on whatever days are defined as the spring holidays. The original, if you back up even prior to the floating language, the original was um, good, it stated Good Friday and Easter Monday. And a year ago, the board had interest, actually even suggested to us to look at maybe mm -hmm. added flexibility because even some immediate issues, uh, uh, administratively, um, we've had some board meetings on that so-called paid holiday and to give some of us that flexibility. So there was some interest by the board of, could we come up with something different that maybe could apply to a number of situations? And we thought we had something and it has just brought some additional confusion. And um, so we, uh, we think for right now, this uh, we're back to identifying in the spring as we know it, for, mo for many of our employees, uh, there's still two paid holidays in the spring and um, whether or not that will in the near future continue to be surrounded by the so-called Easter weekend and uh, that's something that we will continue to identify if it doesn't surround that and the district office is closed districts that we'll address that okay. when it when it happens that's this that we will we will make any adjustments to this as as our calendar perhaps is driven by the calendar okay. is there any correlation between like the, the spring break thing and the uh, snow days is there not for us we were very frugal <laughs> in calling them so yeah so by defining it spring holiday um, I think we're looking more to align it with the calendar so maybe there isn't if we have a spring break instead of an Easter break, those holidays can be during that spring break time. Just allows a little bit more flexibility. Okay. Uh, next is the alternative benefit plan. So as we continue to work through the handbook and understand how the language that has been approved is actually applied, um, there continues to be questions. And this language change focuses more on the grand personing provision and talks about um, if someone transfers or is laid off from a position, how does that affect the alternative benefit plan um, and the changes that have been implemented in that? So um, the intent in the additional, additional language is to really just add some clarification and 
so people understand the process and what that really is, how that will work. So to emphasize that, just so everybody knows, um, if, there, if the employee chooses to make a change, then they lose that grandfathering status. If the right. district makes a change uh, to the employee as far as a reassignment, then in most cases they perhaps would continue <coughs> with that. But uh, it's just important to note note that, that what, what you're looking at and considering to change, okay? And the grand personing was the amount? Correct. Yes. So the amount um, drastically reduces when you make a change, a self-initiated change. That was always the intent from the start. We think we communicated that. That shouldn't be something new to this board, but it wasn't necessarily as clear mm -hmm. as we needed to make it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the next item falls under the teachers, part two. This is related to summer school. The addition on to the language is to just help clarify in a little bit more detail how to determine what the rate for summer school payments will be. Um, there was still a little bit of lack of clarity in that language, some ambiguity, so we decided to make it as clear as possible to in, put in an, ex an example as well to help people understand how to determine that summer school payment amount. The next item falls under part three. This is um, the hourly staff. Um, this is under the uniforms, protective clothing, and tools section. Um, again, defining, just adding some language to add clarification as to when it's appropriate to wear the school district issued um, uniforms that people, uh, some employees receive for their position. So to help add length to the life of the clothing as well as the community knows when someone is working versus not working. Um, and then there's also a provision added um, when an employee leaves the district, which we have not had previously, um, to require those uniforms to be turned in upon termination of employment. Um, the last item then tonight falls under the um, administrative supervisory part four, um, the post-employment ben benefits. This is just specific to the supervisors. Um, what we've done is um, went back and looked at making some changes that probably should have been done a while back. Um, as you may recall, historically, the supervisor language follows what the teacher changes are. So. Um, we had missed a few rounds there of updating and making changes to that language. So what we've added will align the distribution methods and the amounts of supervisors with what is currently in the teacher language. Any questions to any of the items tonight? Otherwise, I'll be asking for approval at the next meeting. Any questions or comments? I have a question not in regard to um, that I disagree with anything here just a curious question um, on 8.6 do you know the percentage of our staff members who are having union dues deducted I do not know okay mr. Austin I can tell you that that varies widely by the group yes that's what I'm guessing um, that for some of our hourly employee groups um, last I checked with representatives from the association it was down to less than 50 percent for some groups um, for other groups um, I think the fall-off has been very small um, I, I can't give you percentages but I do know as a general feedback from the employees and honestly we don't view it as our business to and if you look at the wording of the deduction language we try to say we're going to provide this but we're not going to make a statement whether Dues deduction is a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, of course uh, not. I just was just our, curious. Yeah, yeah. So, so the reason we wouldn't have a number right off the top of our heads is because we spend very little time trying to monitor whether people are associating themselves with a union or not. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Melissa.
Then moving on to board member reports and discussion, I'll call on board members in the order of roll call and ask you present any committee updates or reports, comments that you may have. So, Kate Mayer. Um, no committee meetings. Um, comments, I'm thinking of Brianna, um, who this week is at her Senate Scholar Program, and um, I know one of the pictures I saw that she posted was a view of the Madison Capitol and she said something like this is my view I could get used to this <laughs> and I thought to myself you know I wouldn't be surprised that in a few years as they go by she's not on a on a, a ballot for something changing the world um, and so I wish her luck and enjoyment in her in what she's learning this week thank you um, Mr. Menninger uh, just a few comments this evening. First off, as earlier, I just want to express to Ms. Treadway, we will certainly miss you, and it's been a pleasure serving with you these last few years. So. And then also, uh, Ms. Collins, congratulations, and look forward to working with you uh, in the future. So, um, And then just, uh, you know, we're into April. I see graduations already next month as we're heading into the waning weeks of the school year, there is one benefit to the weather, I think, and uh, that's probably keeping everybody getting away from spring fever. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess we can certainly count those blessings. And then I don't know, did the baseball game go on tonight? Ah, oh, doggone it. Uh, once again, it's it's been a tough year for some of the spring sports, but uh, when we get a chance to uh, get out there and cheer on Holman, so. I believe they were shoveling the field yesterday, so I just couldn't get it ready. <laughs> We're at huge track meets tomorrow night too. So track meets and doubleheader tomorrow night. And have you seen the forecast? <laughs> <laughs> the forecast is not good. <laughs> That's all I have to see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is Treadway. Yeah, first of all, congratulations, um, like Kate said, to a lot of the students um, recently that have had exemplary awards or honors or things have happened to them it includes our DECA group it includes Brianna um, Miss Russell lots of different ones I've noticed so congratulations to all of you um, congratulations to Lisa and Tim um, and good luck and I also um, most of you that are regulars probably will um, um, will probably see that this is probably the longest part that I'll ever longest point to deliver talk because I'm not a huge talker at the meeting so um, you will have to listen to me for a brief while um. want me to come back to you okay <laughs> mr. Dunlap I'd like to uh, remind everyone that we will not have a finance committee this meeting this month that We've got everything under control, I guess. Skip a month. Uh, I'd like to say goodbye to Carrie as well, and, uh, and we'll miss having her around all the meetings and, and her great input, and I hope she stays involved in committees and stays involved with the board and helps us out as much as she can. And then the last thing, I'd just like to remind everyone that the first week in May is Teacher Appreciation Week, so go out and hug a couple teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Gittins. It's the same ditto to uh, Gary's comments. I can follow them up very carefully. <laughs> and Kari? So anyway, I apologize. Um, my husband asked me last week if uh, he should say congratulations or sorry. <laughs> As many of our board members will know that the um, congratulations piece comes from the work and the time and the effort that they all put in um, in the meetings and, and things that they do to serve the community and the district. Um, so I answered both. <laughs> I'd not be human and I, I would be lying if I didn't say that um, at some level I wasn't disappointed and not being successful at something. Um, so it was with both of these emotions that I say thank you. Thank you to the community. Thank you to the employees and the fellow board members and the district opponent for providing me with the honor to serve you on the school board for the last three years. I can't describe or put into words how much I've learned, how much I've grown, how many relations have hopefully that I've formed, and how much I've been humbled by the last three years. I'm appreciative for everyone that has taken the time to listen to me, answer my questions, and allow me to challenge them, hopefully. 
I consider something a success when one has made an impact on someone or something. And I can only hope that in some small way, I can say that's true of my time over the last three years. I'm grateful that I'll be allowed to continue to serve the district and schools by volunteering for my children's academics and activities that they're involved in. Most of all, I thank you to the dedicated teachers and employees of this great district for providing my children with a top-notch education, the reason that we came to Holman in the first place. Um, and for those, for my children to continue to grow into bright, caring young ladies that they're becoming. Most importantly, thank you for your family, being supportive and understanding of the time, as well as all of your families. I know that Lisa and Tim, as well as the remaining board, are great assets to the district and will continue to move the district forward. It's important work that you should not take lightly, and I will end my term as I started by saying thank you, and thank you for allowing me to serve you. Well, Kari, I would say the pleasure has been all ours, and I just would like to give you a round of applause. And you know, kudos, and, and I will say that you have challenged me on occasion, and I have really appreciated it and grown from it, and that's all we can ask from each other is to always be looking out and looking and asking those questions that I'll miss that you've been asking and so it has been a real pleasure getting to know you and I hope we will be able to continue um, and to um, have you as you said volunteer in the district and hopefully some of the district committees because you've really um, served us well and especially in the buildings and grounds I think that you've led this last year so thank you for that um, also, congratulations to Tim and Lisa. I, we are a district that is blessed and have been for um, many elections with a number of quality candidates that have run. And so, um, Tim and Lisa, congratulations to you on your successful campaigns. And that's really all I had for this evening as well. So, moving on. I will, um, since we were talking about the election, I guess we have to formally um, share the results. Um, the Lisa Collins had 1,089, Kari Treadway 684, and Tim Menninger 1,027. Um, and so um, Lisa and Tim were the successful candidates in this election, and I think that's all I need to do. I know that. Uh, Mrs. Jagosinski came in and served since Kari was on um, the ballot. Mrs. Jagosinski came in and served as the, the reviewer with some community members um, that do that work. Um, so then moving on to board meeting schedule, I would note that we have April 17th actually, there is a new board member orientation at CISA 4. Um, April 22nd, we have a board meeting. May 13th, we have a board meeting. May 25th, we have graduation at the Lacrosse Center. And Kari, you're welcome and in invited to um, join us on stage. That's the practice that we have been doing. Um, for me, graduation is the highlight of the year, watching those young people walk across the stage. I think um, other board members um, can account for that or attest to that. And then May 28th, is that that is the Tuesday after Memorial um, Day. And that old board evaluation, if you have not completed the evaluation, if you would get that in, that would be wonderful. And I know under board meeting dates, we're still looking, um, Christina, do you have a date for our meeting that we're trying to schedule? Um, I know you were polling the board members for um, have a final one. Okay, so if you need to reach any of us um, before we leave this evening, we're trying to schedule a special meeting. So um, then I would move on to consent agenda items. We have the personnel report, financial claims and accounts, um, human resources report, 
um, which the, I'm sorry, the handbook, which the grievance initiation form and the grievance appeal form, which we approved, or uh, I think we were presented with at the last uh, meeting. And the second reading on the board policy, community staff, student involvement, and decision making. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. I'll let you guys duke it out <laughs> for a second. Uh, any discussion on any items? I will say kudos um, to Mr. Bayer, Tim Bakeman, who is coming um, from Southeast Technical. I was getting all kinds of heat because we were recruiting him away from the college, but he's a really quality person, so congratulations on being able to do that. Um, he'll be a great hire. So. Um, having said that, a uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And move on to executive session. Mrs. Treadway. I move that the Board of Education uh, goes into executive session as per Wisconsin Statute 19.851C for the purpose of reviewing preliminary notes of the context. And 19.851G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel regarding pending claim against the district. Is there a second? Second. And if you would do roll call, please. Nita Jaginski? Excused? Kate Mayer? Yes. Tim Menninger? Yes. Myself? Yes. Gary Dunlop? Yes. Joe Gittins? Yes. And Cheryl Hancock? Yes. 